Good morning and welcome to BUILD. You know, it's always uh, fun to be back at BUILD, uh, especially in times like this. You know, we're just about getting into these middle innings of another platform shift. Uh, and these okay, let's dive in. We're doing a deep dive today into some uh, really insightful source material. Yeah. It's an excerpt from Satya Nadella's keynote at Microsoft BUILD 2025. Ah, BUILD. Always big announcements there. Exactly. This is where they lay out the vision. And, well, there's a ton to unpack from just this piece. Absolutely. So our mission today, really, is to cut through that transcript. Mm -hmm. Pull out the most important nuggets, yeah. you know, the strategic shifts, the key insights about where Microsoft sees AI agents. And the whole developer opportunity heading in 2025. And beyond, really. Right. And the central thread, the big picture they painted, seems to be this idea that we're squarely in the middle innings. And middle innings, yeah. Of a massive platform shift, specifically the open agentic web. Okay, let's start there then. What does middle innings even mean in this context? Well, what's fascinating is how they compared it to history. Like past shifts. Exactly. Think back to 91, Win32, GUIs becoming mainstream. Okay. Or 96, the web stack taking off. For a dot com era. Or even 2008, cloud and mobile exploding. Got it. So those moments where the tech hit critical mass. Precisely. So calling this the middle innings, it suggests we're past the... Um, early experiment. Has the is this real phase. Yeah. And now the underlying tech is getting robust, widespread, ready for serious scale and investment. Okay. So if we're in the thick of this agentic web shift. What's the big takeaway for you, the listener, the developer, the org, trying to figure out a strategy? Well, the key insight articulated in the source is that this shift is fundamentally about expanding opportunity for you. Expanding opportunity? How so? It's about giving developers the tools, the platform, to operate across every single layer of the stack. Every layer. Enabling the creation of not just traditional apps, but these intelligent agents. Agents that augment capabilities, they said. For every person, every organization. Yeah. It's enabling you to build things that just weren't possible before. Right, and building starts with coding. AI has obviously changed that profoundly. And there's a massive piece of news about developer tools right up front. Oh yeah, the headline grabber. Open sourcing co-pilot in VS Code. Just think about the significance of that for a second. It's huge. Yeah. Taking these deep AI capabilities, code completion, generation, mm -hmm. and embedding them right into the core open source repo oh. of, well, probably the most popular code editor out there. Makes those powerful tools accessible at the most fundamental level. For millions of developers, yeah. And the keynote specifically framed Copilot's evolution. From yeah. peer programmer. To peer programmer, yes. Yeah. That's a really loaded distinction. It sounds like it. What's the difference there, according to them? Okay, this is where it gets really interesting. The peer programmer, as they describe it, yeah. isn't just sitting next to you making suggestions. It's a full coding agent. Built into GitHub. Right into GitHub. Yeah. And crucially, it can complete tasks autonomously. Autonomous tasks. Whoa. Okay, that changes the game. What kinds of tasks? They gave concrete examples. Autonomously assigning issues. Drafting and implementing bug fixes. Fixing bugs on its own. Yeah. Mm. Even adding new features, handling routine code maintenance. Wow. It's about offloading chunks of the development lifecycle to an AI agent that can act independently. And available now. That's what the keynote stated. Yeah. Available now. That's a fundamental shift in how dev teams could operate. Mind blowing. An agent fixing bugs. <laughs> Okay, let's move up the stack. From the dev experience to the uh, the business user. Right, Microsoft 365. That platform was highlighted as a major opportunity for this AI shift. Absolutely. Microsoft 365 Copilot was a big focus. Yeah. Announced as generally available. Generally available now. And the way they described its role, UI for AI, what does that really mean in the M365 context? It means M365 is becoming that central, intuitive place where you interact with AI during your workday the main interface. Exactly. It brings together core functions, chat, search, notebooks, create, mm -hmm. plus agents. All in one unified experience. It's the scaffolding, as you said, for AI enhancing productivity right in the apps you already use. And for organizations wanting to tailor this, co-pilot tuning. Exactly. This is a key insight for enterprises. Copilot tuning lets you build new enterprise grade agents ah. by fine tuning them on your company's specific data, internal docs, workflows, even communication style. Yes. The vision is to take that collective expertise within your firm mm -hmm. 
the stuff trapped in documents or processes, mm -hmm. and amplify it through these custom AI agents. Make that expertise instantly accessible, actionable. And they know that apps will evolve too. Right. As the underlying models get better, the apps built on them become uh, more stateful, multimodal, handle different data types. And multi-agent, coordinating different agents. Exactly. More sophisticated interactions. Okay, that leads perfectly into this concept they introduced, the intelligence production line. Ah, yes. Foundry. Presented as exactly that. A production line for intelligence. A production line. That suggests scale, efficiency, industrial strength. What does it mean for building AI? It means providing the infrastructure, the tooling, to build and deploy sophisticated AI apps and agents at scale, efficiently. Okay. And it starts with massive choice. The source mentioned supporting over 1,900 models today. 1,900, wow. Yeah. Everything from general response models to specialized reasoning, task-specific, multimodal, the whole gamut. And some headline-grabbing model announcements tied to Foundry. Definitely. Grok from EKI is coming to Azure. Okay, that's big. But the really powerful concept in Foundry is this. You provision throughput once. Once, not per model. Right. Provision throughput once on Foundry, and you can use it seamlessly across multiple models, including Grok. Ah, so it changes the operational side of using diverse models. Fundamentally. Mistral was also highlighted, especially sovereign deployment options for the EU. Important for data residency. Absolutely. And they gave a shout out to the full llama herd from Meta coming to Azure. Mentioned Lamacon even. So you've got this vast selection of models in Foundry. How do you actually, you know, use one, take it, maybe tweak it, turn it into an A? Right. This is where the strategic link between Foundry and Copilot Studio comes in. Yeah. It's critical. How does that work? You can fine tune or post train a model in Foundry, maybe in your company data or some specialized data set. Okay. And then you seamlessly drop that trained model directly into Copilot Studio. Ah, so it's a pipeline. Exactly. A direct pipeline from your intelligence production line to building and deploying agents for specific workflows or tasks. It's the build and deploy loop for this agentic future. But Keynote also painted this broader vision. Organizations with people and agents working together seamlessly. Mm -hmm. How do you even manage that at scale? It seems complex. This brings up a really crucial point for enterprise adoption. Governance, identity, security. The essentials. Right. right. And the key insight here is Microsoft's focus. Mm -hmm. Extending the existing ubiquitous systems enterprises already use. Existing systems, like for managing people and devices now. Exactly. Identity management, endpoint security, access control. Take those systems and apply them to agents too. Use the same rails as they put it. Precisely. The same rails managing employee identities and device security, now managing agents securely within the org boundary. So not building a whole new management stack for agents. No, extending the trusted one. Mm. Which makes a lot of sense for adoption. It does. Okay, that covers cloud and enterprise systems. But what about bringing AI and agents down to the edge, onto like PCs? That was another major focus, showing the depth of the platform vision. They announced Foundry Local. Foundry Local. So Foundry, but on your machine. Essentially, yeah. And it's not just some cut down version. It brings the full app server and agent building capability down to run directly on edge devices, client machines. Wow. What's included in Foundry Local to make that work? It provides a fast runtime mm. optimized for client side performance. Okay. Includes models optimized for local execution, oh. offers agents as a service, mm. and comes with a CLI command line interface for local app development. And platform support. Importantly, yeah. Mm. Supported right out of the gate on both Windows and Mac. Broadens the reach significantly. And speaking of Windows, it's clearly being positioned as a, well, a first-class platform for AI itself. Yes, big announcement there. Making Windows the best platform for AI with Windows AI Foundry. Windows AI Foundry, what does that involve? It includes building in uh, microcommon protocol servers, MCP servers directly into the OS. MCP. For what? For core functions. Yeah. Accessing the file system, managing settings, triggering app actions, handling windowing. So MCP is like a standard way for things to talk. Kind of, yeah. Uh -huh. Think of it as a standard protocol for apps and agents to securely interact with system services and each other, mm -hmm. locally or across the network. Okay. By having core Windows functions exposed as these built-in MCP servers, the OS becomes fundamentally programmable by AI agents. And there's a registry component too? The native NCP registry, yeah. For discovering these services securely, making sure they're vetted, while keeping the user or admin in control of access. So it's creating this interoperable layer for agents right at the OS level. That's the idea. Now, speaking of Windows history, 
There was a moment about WSL that felt kind of neat. Ah, WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Yeah, the journey there is fascinating. Started as Bash on Ubuntu on Windows, what, nearly 10 years ago? Something like that. Evolved into WSL. Yeah. And the keynote mentioned, looking back. At the very first issue filed in the WSL repo when it was created. Exactly. A request to open source it. And the announcement was. They're closing that very first issue. As fixed. Because. Because WSL is now fully open source. Wow. That's a big deal for the deaf community. It's a significant move, yeah powerful open source contribution. Okay, stepping back a bit for the broader view, Kevin Scott, the CTO, joined briefly. Right, to talk about the wider agentic web ecosystem. And he introduced NL Web. NL Web, yeah. The core idea is simple but powerful. Empower anyone with an existing website or API. Which is basically everyone online. Right, to easily transform it into an agentic application yeah. by leveraging large language models to enrich the services and data that site or API already provides making them more intelligent, more interactive. And how does NL Web connect back to that MCP framework we just talked about? Ah, uh, crucial piece of the puzzle. A key point made was every NL Web endpoint is by default an MCP server. By default. Okay, so what does that mean? It means any agent that speaks MCP, that micro common protocol can automatically discover and interact with these agent-enabled websites and APIs. So it builds the connective tissue. Exactly allows independent agents to leverage intelligence exposed by existing services all across the web. That vision, it really does feel like it echoes the original spirit of the web, but for intelligence this time. It really does. Yeah. As Kevin Scott put it, it gets us closer to that original ethos making content, and now intelligence and capabilities, more distributed, discoverable, programmable across the network. Okay, let's shift down the stack again. Data layer, SQL Server 2025 was mentioned. Yes, SQL Server 2025 launching. Yeah. But the real emphasis was on bringing data and intelligence even closer together using Fabric. Fabric, Microsoft's unified data platform. Right, SQL was integrated last fall. The big news here, bringing Cosmos DB into Fabric as well. Cosmos DB, their global NoSQL database. Exactly, so now you can manage, analyze your transactional, operational, analytical data more unified, side by side with AI workloads. And for data workers, a standout feature mentioned for Power BI. Oh yeah, Copilot and Power BI. This is super practical AI. What was it too? It lets you literally chat with your data, use natural language. Ask questions. Ask questions, explore visuals, run analysis across multiple Power BI reports, semantic models, just by typing or speaking. What was the barrier to getting insights? Significantly. Makes deep data analysis more accessible. Okay, down to the absolute foundation. Infrastructure. Yeah. What was the core message there? The hardware? The cloud backbone? Well, they framed it around that fundamental challenge in AI infrastructure. Which is? Delivering the best performance, lowest latency for AI, while simultaneously driving down cost. The performance versus cost trade-off. Exactly. Microsoft's explicit aim. Lowest cost, highest scale infrastructure. And they boiled that down to a specific metric, didn't they? They did. The ultimate equation they articulated, yeah, yeah. delivering the most tokens per watt per dollar. Tokens per watt per dollar captures the efficiency needed. Precisely. For massive AI compute. And achieving it, they explained, means writing multiple S-curves at once. Multiple. Yeah, not just Moore's Law for silicon, also system software optimization and sophisticated model optimization. So it's the compounding effect of all three. That's the idea. And writing those curves means getting the latest hardware. As quickly as possible, yeah. yeah. Into the cloud. Azure was highlighted first cloud to bring NVIDIA GB200s online at scale. GB200s, state of the art. Speaks directly to delivering on that tokens per watt per dollar metric with the leading edge silicon. Okay. Finally, the keynote touched on a really forward-looking application area, science. Yeah, this felt particularly ambitious, the announcement of Microsoft Discovery. Microsoft Discovery, what's the core idea? It's not just using AI in science. It's using AI to lead breakthroughs in the scientific process itself. Accelerating discovery. Dramatically accelerating the discovery and creation of new materials, compounds, molecules. Yeah. That's the goal. So where does Microsoft Discovery fit in the overall platform picture they laid out? They use some clear analogies in the source. Right. If GitHub is the dedicated platform for software developers, the whole life cycle. Okay. And if M365 with Copilot and Studio is the platform for knowledge work, business process automation. Right. Then Microsoft Discovery is positioned as the dedicated platform for science. Applying the whole AI stack to scientific workflow. Exactly. The models and foundry, the infrastructure, the agent capabilities, applying it all directly to the complex needs of 
scientific research simulation, data analysis to speed up fundamental discovery. That really underscores the breadth of the system's approach they're taking. So many layers. It absolutely does. That's the overarching theme, right? A comprehensive platform approach. Every layer we discussed. You've got the open ecosystem for the dev lifecycle, GitHub, Copilot, mm -hmm. then yeah. intelligent agents for every role, every business process, M365, Copilot, Teams. The agent factory, Foundry, yeah. for building any AI app with any data or model. All running on world-class optimized infrastructure. And critically, underpinned by those robust existing enterprise rails management identity security now extended to cover agents it's truly end-to-end -end thinking it's genuinely impressive how much ground that keynote excerpt covered from the code editor right up to well transforming science and ultimately the keynote brought it back to the core purpose which was to create opportunity for you whether you're a developer building the next gen apps or an organization looking to leverage ai yeah the goal is fueling your ambition in this landscape. Right. So here's something maybe for you, the listener, to consider as you navigate all this. It's incredibly dynamic space. For sure. As AI evolves from, you know, being a pair programmer assistant to potentially a peer programmer operating alongside you doing yeah. autonomous tasks. Mm -hmm. And as these intelligent agents get integrated into the same security and management frameworks we use every day, mm. What does that future of work look like specifically for you? Yeah, how does it change your role, your team? And how might an intelligence production line like Foundry unlock completely new possibilities in your field, your industry? And thinking bigger, yeah. how could these tools fundamentally reshape disciplines, like I'm scientific cute. discovery? Exactly, just some uh, food for thought. Straight from the heart of the Microsoft Build 2025.